so we're going to take a look at a little bit more complicated example in this video for uh, trying to figure out a, a structure from a NMR spectra. And so we're going to start off with the molecular formula of, let's say, C8 H9Br. So again, the first thing that we're going to do is try to figure out our degrees of unsaturation. So for this molecule, the degrees of unsaturation are going to be 8 for 8 carbons, minus 9 over 2 for the number of protons, and then we subtract 1 over 2 for the bromine, and then we end up adding 1 at the end of the equation. So this simplifies to 8 minus uh, 4.5 minus 0 0.5 plus 1, which equals uh, 4 degrees of unsaturation. So the next thing that we have to do is take a look at the spectral data. So we'll start off with the first peak, peak A. Peak A has a uh, chemical shift of 2.0, and it integrates to around 3 protons, and it shows up on the window as a doublet. The second peak is peak B, and it shows up at around 5.1 ppm, integrates to one proton, and shows up as a quartet. And the third and final piece of spectral data um, is, uh, is going to show up at around 7.4 ppm. It integrates to five, and it shows up as a broad singlet. So the next thing we want to do is to run down our list of all of our spectral data and try to figure out the most probable structure associated with each uh, peak. So the most probable structure for peak A is going to end up being a CH3 group because this integrates to three protons. For peak B, more than likely this is going to be a methion group because this peak integrates to one proton, so that's the most likely structure that we're going to have. And what's really interesting is for peak C, we got um, a chemical shift of around 7.4, and we can really use this data to our advantage. So you should know by now that uh, this chemical shift of around 7.4 is equivalent to an aromatic region for a proton. And so this should kind of clue you in when you take into account uh, the integration of 5 that we're more than likely dealing with this kind of benzene-like structure. Because uh, right here we have an aromatic compound, and if you take a look at the integration, we have five protons, so that tells you that we should have some kind of substitution on the ring. So we are taking into account one, two, three, four, five protons coming off the ring. So we have one substitution. So the next thing that we want to do is to take a look at our original molecular formula and figure out if we've taken into account all of the atoms in that formula. So we should have eight carbons in our final structure, and we have taken into account two, four, six, seven, eight carbons. So these are all taken care of. And we should have nine protons. So we have five, six, seven, eight, nine protons. So those are all taken care of. And then finally, we need to include the bromine in our molecule in some way. So we need to draw over here a bromine atom. So now we've taken into account all of the puzzle pieces for our final molecule. So we'll just draw a little box around them to show what we have to work with. And so one might be very tempted at the very beginning to just take your phenyl group right here and to put the bromine on directly. And this isn't going to work because we still need a way to put our methine and our methyl group onto the benzyl ring, onto the phenyl ring. And so this type of configuration is not going to be, not going to work. So if we take a look again at peak A, we see that again it integrates to three, so we should have this methyl group, but it also has a splitting pattern of a doublet. So it's gonna look like this on the uh, spectra or something like this. So what this is telling us is that not only do we have our CH3, but we also have a singular vicinal proton. So we should have a carbon with one proton on it, and then we have two other groups that aren't protons. So that's what the doublet is telling us, is that these protons are vicinal to one proton. And this is actually really great because when you take a look at peak B, peak B is again a methine group, which is what this group is that we predicted from the doublets. So really we can just redraw this as your methine group. And so that takes care of your peak B right there. And we also have already taken care of peak A right here. 
So let's take one more look at our list of puzzle pieces and see what we've taken care of. So we've gotten rid of the methyl group and we've also gotten rid of the methine group. And so the only two pieces that we have to work with now are the phenyl group and the bromine. So let's take a look at the phenyl group. So at this point, there are really only, there's really only one place to put the phenyl group and that's off the methine group. So we'll put that right here. And so we'll cross off the phenyl group now. And so now it should be pretty intuitive that the bromine can only go one other place, and that's here. Now, let's double check our work by taking a look at peak B. Peak B has a chemical shift of around 5.1, and that should tell you that the protons for peak B are in a very electronegative environment. So let's double check our molecule. So if we take a look at um, proton B, um, we'll see that it's adjacent to a bromine, a very electronegative atom, as well as a phenyl group. So the fact that this is uh, relatively uh, downshifted quite a bit is explained quite well by the structure that we've proposed. So that makes sense here and here. So we've explained this uh, chemical shift. And also let's take a look at the splitting pattern. So this proton one should be a quartet, which means it should be vicinal to three other protons. So if we take a look at, again, proton B, we'll see that it is vicinal to three other protons. So that makes sense in terms of the splitting pattern. So now we can be pretty confident that now that we've taken care of all of the pieces of our puzzle that we can draw our molecule. So let's draw our phenyl group right here. And we'll put our methine with our bromine right here. And then we'll finally add our methyl group on the end. So this is the final compound that we're going to propose. And it turns out that this is correct.